case you aren't aware. All right, it is Tuesday. I think, what is it, the 15th? Oh, I have some money. I gotta pay some bills today. I, I got some new lighting. I, got, I bought it for painting figurines and it's full spectrum of lighting. It's like a grow lighting and I was trying it out this morning. How's that? I'm blue, bladder, blue, bladder, blue. And then you got, uh, let's see, we got the ultraviolet range. Hmm. And then there's the full spectrum. Eh, it's not really. I think if I mess around with the camera angle, maybe I'll be able to use this. But uh, for now, no. Nope. We'll just leave it like this. I'm always trying to improve. I don't have. I, I don't make money off these videos, and I'm not really trying to. The whole uh, reasoning behind my channel is eventually I want to open my own gym and I'm fairly well known in the powerlifting community especially here in Vegas so I've got a little bit of a name going but I'm trying to do brand recognition uh, and it's working so every, pretty much every powerlifting meet I've gone to in the last year or so across the country at least one person said hey you're that guy that does those videos I'm like yeah so you know I'm I'm targeting the community I want to target and it is working to that end. So even though I haven't made any money off of these, uh, it is it, 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 so far it's been a really good investment. And on top of that, you guys have helped me train and I've met a lot of cool people. And I've even got to meet some of you and I'm gonna meet some more because as I've stated in previous videos, I'm gonna do the WRPF uh, Nationals in October with uh, Cephas and Tommy H. And that's gonna be epic, man. If that's the last meet I ever do, that'll be a way to just go out. You know what I mean? I'll be 50 years old. I'll be at, at a nationals for a huge federation, and I will probably be, I'm gonna be willing to bet I'll be the strongest masters lifter there. And my goal is to be able to compete with the youngsters. Maybe, uh, and that's hard. I, I can usually place with the young guys in local meets, but at a nationals or worlds, that's, that's a, that's a tall order, but I'm going to do my best. You never know. All right. First comment of the day. I just opened up my laptop. And right off the bat, the first one, my man Cephist writes, I love you, man. I get that crap with my scars all the time. I'm talking about my gut. And people call me out for... I've been fighting a lot of mental health stuff lately. It's not easy. It never goes away. No, man. This is going to sound like a love letter, you know, man crush, but I have, I have such an enormous amount of respect for you, Seppis. Like, I've been on YouTube for, what, a little over three years, and I saw you right before you started powerlifting. As a matter of fact, I think I, I want to say that I, I tried to talk you into it, and, you know, I, I'm not responsible for anything, but maybe, maybe, you, maybe you competed because of me, I don't know, but uh, I know we talked about it. And I saw you compete, and you had a pretty good total for a beginner. And what was it, like 1,400 pounds? For someone who's never done a competition before? It took me like five years to get that. And it was a good lifter. It went nice, awesome. In three years, this it's incredible what, he, what you've done. You're now flirting with an 1,800-pound total. You are a genuinely elite power lifter. You're not even 40 yet. Uh, Submasters, so you're, you're old enough where that's pretty incredible, but young enough where you can, you know, by the time you get to my age, man, man I don't even know. I guess I want you guys to really think about this. So you could take any one of his lifts. His bench is around 400 pounds. Uh, his squat's over 600. I want to say mid, mid sixes, close to seven. No, you have a 700 pound squat. I'm sorry. So, uh, uh, and your deadlift is mid 600s. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. You could take any one of those lifts and say, yeah, I know this guy that does like 800 or 900 or a yeah, 500 pound bench in that weight class or deadlift. I know a guy that can do 800 at his weight. Yes, there are guys that can, any one lift are incredible. But it's very rare to find someone who can do all three well. And that's where you get the sport of powerlifting. It's that total. And his total is incredible. And it just keeps going up and up and up. 
Mine's still going up, but it's going up incrementally, a little teeny bit at a time. <laughs> For the longest time, I was I wanted Cephas to be my total. I think it was like the first year or two. I was like, you got to catch me. Then he started getting close, and I was like, oh, man, i got to start trying harder. And now it's like, he's gone. See you, buddy. <laughs> now I'm chasing him. But that's okay, because he still motivates me. I'm still... I'm still making gains. I'll be 50 this year, and I'm still PRing. But well, no, what you're doing stuff is incredible. And uh, I get, I get the mental issues, man. I suffer from clinical depression, and but I have, I'm surrounded by really good people. And uh, when I get into that, uh, man, I allow myself to get stuck sometimes because it's comfortable, it's comforting sometimes to be in that depression. So I'll I'll stay there for a minute or two, and I'll just let myself be. But then I. I'll kick my butt out of it. I'll just force myself, you know. It, uh, it's tough, man. Um, men don't talk about mental health that much, but I try to discuss it as frequently as I can because it's something that we're dealing with. And I want young men to know, or guys, my, any man, to know that, you know, there is there's a way out of it. Um, and it usually starts with fellowship, you know, talking about the problem, finding somebody that you can, you know, uh, you know, discuss these things with. Uh, for me, a lot of it is uh, turning my, you know, really, I have my faith, my religion, but there's a lot of you that are atheists or agnostic and they don't uh, have that. And I'm not, uh, for me, I think that's, it's the best, it's the most direct, it's the quickest answer and it's one that's never wrong. A lot of times I don't want to go down that road because I want to do things my way. Um, but there's other ways too. And if you, you know, and interestingly enough, they tend to be aligned. You know, if you go to a group therapy or a doctor or find somebody that you can confide in, it's not that different than what, you know, the church provides. It's almost the same thing, uh, but it's fellowship. Fellowship, sharing, and not being afraid to, to talk about these things uh we have to confront these problems and then from there i think of it as part of training you know we're getting stronger mentally so you know and a lot of guys will say well you're weak you're just, we'll get you whining and depression and all that and it's like yeah i, I but that's something we want to deal with and self-examination and sharing and getting other men to share their issues is part of the process and that's the, the strength i want to cultivate because you can you have to be strong physically mentally and spiritually and things like depression mental health that's that's a spiritual malady as well as a mental one and you could be the strongest man on the planet but if you you just don't have any love for life or joy none of it matters you know everybody else can think you're the best but when you look in the mirror and you hate everything you see what kind of life are you living there's a way out of it there's a way out of it and we usually do that together so I'm here for you. I know he's there. Reach out. It doesn't have to be on YouTube. It can be direct message. I have uh, Instagram and Facebook. We can talk about it. And I can help point you in the right direction. All I can really do is tell you what's worked for me. I can only give you my experience, strength, and hope. But hopefully maybe something that's worked for me might help you. You never know. All right, let's get to the fun comments. All right. B U Jammy writes less range of motion. What's not to like? Uh, I think he's talking about my uh, football power press. Uh, I got a couple comments saying, "Looks a short range of motion. It doesn't count." I don't know. I'm touching my chest with the power. I don't know what you want me to do with it. Maybe you want me to crush myself with it. Uh, maybe maybe it's the pen charge that bothers you. Uh, I wrote, "This is the only lift I do." This 67 second clip of a bar variation is the only lift I ever do, and I don't even know how I walked out to the garage to get set up. Someone had to carry me out and put me on the bench, then hand me the bar, and afterwards I, re I returned to my immobility pod, and uh, <laughs> I don't have to use any of my other muscles. So the only training I do in these 60 second clips, that's it, that, there's no other variations ever. I don't rotate barbells, I don't do other lifts, I don't ever work out with dumbbells. I just do that lift. So thank you, thank you. Yeah, I love your priceless advice, keep it coming. I'll post a squat video and like, I've got like the most weight I've ever had on the bar and I'm shaking when I walk out and I do a squat. And 
I don't hit depth. And it's like, you know, I can barely hold the lift. And then I get a comment saying, well, you have to do full range of motion squats. That doesn't count. I'm like, thanks. <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, you're just trying to show off. Yeah, obviously. I thought it was impressive I could even unrack the sucker. <laughs> you guys got some high standards. Jesus. Man, and you guys that show PR videos off and, and you know, you're excited because it's like the most weight you've ever had on there. And, you know, maybe the lift isn't perfect. You know, your form tends to break down when we're at our max, like our max, true max weight. And you're uh, like, you're just so proud. You're like, I finally got it off the ground. You know, deadlift and like whatever. Maybe you didn't get it quite locked out or, or maybe a bench. You know, maybe it was, uh, maybe your ass came up a little bit or something. But it's like you're, you're showing off like the most you've ever done. I'm like, that's awesome. But the comment section, ooh, you better be prepared for some railing. If it ain't like two Olympics standards, you know what I mean? <laughs> Show those lifts off, man. That's what it's all about. Like, we're all trying to PR together. And it's like, if you, you have an accomplishment or a milestone, even if it's slightly imperfect, show it off. Because the guys that know, know. The guys that care, that we love it. The haters that wish they could do what you could do, those are the ones that are leaving the comments. Understand that. Uh, this one's not a hate comment. Uh, it's a uh, nine vendetta. It's two two days old. Sorry, it took me so long. But uh, he writes, "LOL, lifting big ass weights in the garage while listening to Joe Rogan podcast. It's like I'm watching myself in 20 years. Tis a lifestyle." Yeah. So I wanted to touch on this because I got a theory. The garage is my cave. Every man's got to have his sanctuary. Some guys have, like, a, you know, if you got the money, you've got to set up or, or a loft or some a game room or some some little place where you can get away from everything and do your thing. And most men, right? And for me, it's the garage. And um, when I'm lifting, a lot of guys are rocking out to metal and just getting all hyped up. And I'll, I'll, I'll do that once in a while. But for the most part, I'll put a podcast on a YouTube video of some sort, or I'm watching your guys' videos, whatever. And I'm playing that in the background, and you can hear it. I got, uh, like, the volume up to loud enough. Probably it's not too loud. I don't want to overpower me while I'm talking. But the, 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 the idea is I'm not getting all amped up when I'm doing these lifts. I'm just lifting. So on game day... Uh, on on lifting day on the platform, I can tap into that adrenaline. They got the music, they got the crowd, and it's like a, it's like anabolic. That you get such a boost from it, like you just you're gonna PR everything. The weights always feel super heavy in the garage, and I feel like I'm struggling. And I'm like, man, I gotta compete, and I can barely pick this up. I'm not even like I'm a hundred pounds under what I need to be. I just know. I just know on game day, I'm gonna have that the, the hair standing up on the back of my neck. And I know how to tap into it. I know how to get amped up. And, and then I know how to turn it off. I've learned how to just like use it for a second and then kill it. I don't take pre-workout. Um, I just drink coffee, black. Uh, nothing, you know, I don't get all like whacked out on, on, on whatever uh, pre-workouts. Like, oof. I'll take them when I'm competing. When I'm at the platform, I'll usually have a little. Um, but no, I try to keep. I try to keep it as still and calm as possible when I'm, when I'm working out oh, so that I have that. That's just something I can tap into. And I, I you guys will find, try it out. You, you'll have that extra, you know, when you need it um, as opposed to using it all. Oh, and you don't have that when you, when you, when you got to have it. It's, it's something that I, I really, I think is beneficial. Um, plus it's just, you know, nice, enjoyable afternoon and listening and learning stuff and lifting and just having a nice, quiet couple of hours to myself. Man stuff. All right. Um, this one's a couple days old too. It takes, sorry, it takes me, you know, I work and all that. It takes me a while to get to, I try to respond to every comment, but sometimes it takes me a couple of days. Beef Panda 5740. Now, this is a response to my uh, rant about Warhammer and me threatening to walk away from the from Games Workshop. He writes, then go. But kudos on the lifting and the health side. So, okay, cool. I mean, that's kind of... He's telling me, 
get lost <laughs> on the Warhammer side. But he's saying it's cool that you, you're strong. So that's, I, I can't hate on that comment. But, but this bear response, it's like, come on, no, it's not just go, dude. Like, you know, we have a responsibility to protect the things that are important to us. You know, we grew up with these IPs, and yeah, they change over time. They do, let's face it. But you have to be, you would be a liar to deny that there is not a campaign to wipe the culture out. Like, it's so obvious. And they're pandering to the smallest percentage of the population to the point where it has absolutely become political. It's affected the uh, politics. They, You saw what they did to the White House. Jesus are you kidding me? Like, why? Why? If, if I looked at the demographics, the demographics of people that are actually uh, not, we'll say, uh, homonormative, straight, okay, procreating couples, is somewhere around four or five percent of the population. Now, uh, since 2019, that number has exploded, and it's mostly uh, the Gen Z and then the uh, what is it, the Zoomers, and the, I don't even know what they call the newest generation. Which would suggest that there's a little bit of a social infection going on, like it's it, it's social contagion, and uh, it's a well documented phenomena, and, and that's obvious. It's clearly obvious, and a lot of it is like um, I've noticed with the kids at school, there there's so much hate on being straight and white that they're picking pronouns so that they can be part of the of, of the group, and the the genders that they're picking are like just weird ways of saying straight without saying straight like oh god i can't a couple of uh, one of the genders that uh one of my son's friend picked polyamorous or or like something about it. he loves the people that he loves so that's not a gender that's just saying you have preferences it's it's so stupid it is so stupid and the fact that it's being backed up by science tells me that that's infected with politics because they've abandoned the scientific method. Both my wife and I have STEM backgrounds, microbiology for her, chemistry for me, and we worked you know, in the STEM fields for years and years and years, and their scientific method is drilled in, and they've completely abandoned this in the face of you know, uh, evidence. And it's infected politics, and it's infected the culture, and now it's it's got into Warhammer. And, you know, obviously I spoke out about it because it's something I'm passionate about. But that's the gaslighting they do. For you to deny that there's not an assault on the culture. Uh, and I believe that it has to do a lot with, um, you know, they want to they basically erode uh, the democracy we have, and they want to serve control. And it's a lot of it's. They're following a lot of the same playbooks that the you know, that Russia used in the Soviet Union, the Communist Revolution. Um, it, it didn't work with with uh, the, the uh, bourgeois and uh, uh, proletariat, the working class, because after World War II, the working class in our country had it so good. There was no revolution to be had. You know, you could get a factory job and support a family and buy a house and a nice car, and you had a living wage with one guy, with the man working and the wife staying at home. The American dream was live and well, and we were growing as a country, so they weren't going to get us that way. So, you know, these intellectuals, they took control of the universities and uh, started pumping up extremists, and, and they, they found that they could use race and gender as a way to backdoor so that's why there's so much division. That's why they're putting us against each other. Um, it's to mask the real reason and the reason why, you know, uh, the government is backing this and trying to put it into legislation is because that's, that's a, a way of eroding our First Amendment rights. And uh, it's a way to control us. So they have us constantly divided to the point where we're talking about civil war. Are you kidding me? Civil war. In a country that's, you know, it's one of the most free and prosperous societies that's ever existed. And we're going to ban on that for what? And then once you destroy, you know, I was talking about this, some kids that hate capitalism. They're like, I don't like working these shitty jobs. I can't afford rent. And you know, their grievances are real. We don't make enough money. I mean, I my salary is way higher than my dad's. And he supported our family. I had a couple of houses and cars and I make way more than him, and I'm paycheck to paycheck. Uh, I make a lot more than my dad made, and he supported a family just fine. I have three sisters. 
Um, but so what we were talking was, you know, you don't want if if we can get away with our capitalistic system, which is hardly free market capitalism, by the way, it's definitely government controlled. I mean, they, they tell us what we're allowed to buy and what we're allowed to participate and what businesses we can, you know, interact with. It's not free market capitalism. But the fallacy is, is once we get rid of that and establish this communist utopia, all will be provided for. Well, no, somebody has to produce something and you're going to be told what to do. If you don't work, you're not going to eat. It didn't work like that in the Soviet Union. You basically became a slave of the state. And, you, you know, talk about the top 1% get richer while the rest of us suffer. Now, now nobody has a chance of advancement. We're all equally poor, so we got that going on. You don't have to worry about that. Um, but to say there wasn't a, a class at the top that was elite is absolutely, it was even worse because it was all corruption. You had to be part of the party to be part of that elite. Um, but the government basically decided who was rich and who wasn't. So, yeah, absolutely. So you're not only going to be forced to work, you're going to be told what to do, and it's going to be based on your abilities, more than likely. And we're going to be, you know, you kiss all those, the, you know, the government programs goodbye, because in order to fund that, you got to have taxpayers. And, you know, it's, it, I, just, I just don't think that they've really thought through what the end game is. is. Once you destroy our system and our way of life, and you've erased history, and you've, you know, you've, you've othered us. The other thing to consider is it was really easy for Russia to other the Jews and, and the uh, the Kulaks and all that because they were small percentages of the population. You're trying to other 60% of the country. How do you other straight white people or straight people? You can't force us to be gay. Like, we are the largest percentage of the population. How's that going to work? How are you going to take it over? Because eventually when it gets to a point, we they're all going to kind of make a stand when they have to. And once that group wakes up and comes together, then what are you going to do? Then you'll see what the true demographics are. It's just the whole thing is nonsense. And what we really need to do is get to a point where we're having dialogue and we're talking to each other. And we're sitting down and we're trying to listen and understand each other. That's really what it has to come to. And I hope it does. And I'm going to do my part and say that everybody's welcome at my table. And I don't really care what you're into or what your sexuality is. And I certainly don't care what your race is. We can have a discussion, but you got to be willing to have a discussion back with us. You know what I mean? You guys just kind of drop in, throw insults at us, and leave. You don't ever back yourselves up. You just call us names. Um, we like to have discussions, but you just won't have them with us. Uh, other than, to, you know, like I said, drop insults. Uh, my goal is to do my part to try to get us there. You know what I mean? I want to be the guy that, that doesn't turn anybody away. And that doesn't mean I'm going to agree with you. And if you got some stupid viewpoints, I'm sure you're going to make fun of them. <laughs> but we can talk. We can be friends. You know what I mean? That's my goal. All right. I got to get to work. Uh, I will see you guys on the battlefield.